Uh, I'll be your moderator today. My name is uh, Darko Atias. I am a director of a boutique corporate finance business called True Altitude, focused on B2B technology companies. And I'm always excited to see the uh, evolution in the broader e-commerce and logistics landscape. Uh, today, we're talking about a particularly exciting topic, which is the relevance of uh, order management within a 4PL environment. And uh, we do have uh, Philippe and Francois uh, on stage today, sharing the stage with me today. So I'll allow you guys to introduce uh, yourselves, please. So I'm going to start. I'm Philippe Romano. I'm uh, the co-founder and CEO of KBRW. KBRW is a Paris-based uh, company. Uh, we are specialized in order management system and warehouse management system. And uh, I'm going to describe a little bit more just after. Thank you. Okay. That's what? So I, uh, yeah, I can switch to, uh, to, to this slide. Uh, I'm Francois Chirel. I'm uh, Omnichannel Manager at C-Log. Uh, and C-Log is an entity of uh, Groupe Beaumanoir, which is a, a fashion retail group uh, in France. Uh, and, we are, and we have uh, multiple uh, brands. And now uh, at C-Log, we, uh, we provide a, a full 4PL solution uh, for the brands of the group, as well as uh, external brands. So we do logistics, freight forwarding, uh, and uh, in, in this omnichannel uh, context. Yes, and I'm going to describe KBRW right now. So KBRW is a Paris-based company, uh, what I said before. It is a specialized in order management system and warehouse management system. But I'm going to explain uh, why uh, we are a little bit different than the other actors that you know in this context. Uh, you have three different flows in the order management system. You have the flows for the customer experience. It's uh, the flows for uh, B2C, I'm going to say. So then you have the B2B2C. It is more the wholesaler and the distributor. And it is what we're going to speak, uh, uh, what we're going to explain today, more about uh, wholesale distributor and 3PL. And you have the last part, it is the flows for industrial, uh, uh, like Michelin or, or, uh, or people that are going to produce their product. And we do this, this flows also. So what, what is very difficult when we speak about order management system, it is that you have to understand that there are three flows in the, in the, in the supply chain. And we have to understand clearly uh, this, uh, there are three points. And we have customers in this in, in these uh, three areas. So, uh, for instance, uh, ETAM, uh, D2C, uh, for instance, uh, uh, Michelin, like uh, 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 B2B, and uh, B2B2C, uh, more uh, with uh, Raja or uh, Celog, that it is more uh, uh, how you're going to manage your customer like when you are a, a wholesaler or, or a distributor. And, uh, and some companies are the three of them, like uh, LVMH uh, and a uh, brand of pa in particular, and they do the, the full scope, and so uh, we, can, uh, we can work in these in this three flows. So if it is not clear, you can, uh, I can explain you that after. Right. I'll just go back one slide because there was one slide before this one. The, the OMS that we will be talking about today is currently in production. And so it's handling about uh, 4,000 orders per day. And almost all of them are orchestrated, uh, orchestrated automatically. And that's uh, C-Log in general. Uh, we work with four, uh, uh, more than 30 uh, retail brands. Uh, just uh, maybe a few words more on C-Log. It was uh, the, the company was created 20 years ago, and the, the development was always uh, uh, for the, the, the internal brands, and then expanded to to the uh, to uh, to other brands. And uh, now it's about 50/50 of our uh, um, turnover that's done internally and uh, externally. Move to the context. Yes. Yeah. It's <laughs> so uh, the, the, the the context when uh, why we we set up this OMS uh, basically around five years ago, we we decided that we had to increase uh, our B two C capabilities. So we've we've been doing e commerce for quite a long time now, uh, but the the group is historically a retail group, and our facilities are designed to to be very efficient for B two B preparations and to massive for massified uh, preparation. Um, and we knew that we had to follow the e-commerce trend to increase the overall capacity without uh, impacting our B2B capacity and also to, to go further on the, the service quality. So basically, it boils down to uh, same day or day plus one deliveries 
And the, the main point is uh, our traditional warehouses would imply that we prepare on the next day and ship on the next day. Now uh, we had to, to build a solution that allows us to continuously uh, prepare to, to prepare the order as they, as they fall during the day. I, I can go back to, yes. And what was important in, in the context, it was to manage the B2B flow and the B2B, B2C flow with the same order management system. Usually, uh, you have an order management system for B2C. Uh, you know this kind of uh, stuff. We manage click and collect, ship from store, and stuff like this. Uh, but uh, in the case of the 3PL, it's a little bit different because you're going to receive the order for the B2C. And we were supposed to manage also the B2B flow, so the replenishment of the, mega, uh, the, the shop with the same order management system. So it's a layer in, uh, in front of all, uh, all uh, the flows. Uh, between uh, the e-commerce website and the warehouse management system and, and, and ERP, so it's a flow, and we can manage both of this uh, of this flow for uh, Beaumanoir brands and also for brands from the outside, because Celog is uh, a three PL for his own for his own brand and for other brands. Yeah, and uh, the um, the reason actually an, an explanation to to this uh, uh, constraint is that our main guideline in this uh, project was that it was we, C-Log, as a logistics provider uh, who wanted to, uh, wanted to uh, expand our capabilities and to provide better service to our clients. Uh, but that's what to, that was to be uh, completely painless and, uh, and with no impact for the client, for the brand. So basically, we opened up a new warehouse uh, which uh, we, we actually designed it, we built it, and uh, now it's, uh, it's uh, operational uh, with uh, specific capabilities. I'll come back to that. But this was to be uh, transparent for the brand. So we had a new location, inventory in two places, but the, the, the brands did not need to change anything in, in their business processes, in the way they manage inventory or anything. All this uh, uh, fall down to our responsibility. Uh, so this came with uh, new roles within the company and new challenges. Uh, so I'll come back on the on the warehouse itself. But the the, the main uh, the key points were having inventory in two places, uh, deciding on inventory positioning, uh, having a, a centralized and uh, and accurate view of all the inventory and making decisions as to how we position the stock, but also how we serve the orders. Uh, so to, to, allow this, uh, to, to follow this initial guideline, we have to have uh, facilities that can do all type of flows. So we can do B2B and B2C in our historical warehouses. That's what we already did. And we keep doing B2C when we need to in, in those, uh, those facilities. And this new hub uh, is dedicated to B2C, but we can also do uh, B2B preparation if needed. Uh, and, uh, but still, we have uh, specialized, in a way, uh, distribution centers, and we need to, to decide uh, on the fly for each order how we will uh, process it. So that's the, the, the key question here. Yeah. Just a few words on the, the warehouse itself. So it's uh, located in uh, Poupry, near, near Orléans. Uh, it's uh, 18,000 square meters, uh, and it can handle up to, up to 50,000 uh, articles per day. It's continuous preparations. It's, uh, uh, it combines automation and robotics. All the, the automation was, uh, the process was designed and uh, we, we worked with partners. And for all the robotics parts, we completely designed it in-house and we built the robots uh, in-house as well. So it's a fully proprietary solution. They are good on this. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to explain a little bit that. <laughs> it's a, an architecture schema in order to understand. So what we have to understand, first of all, it is you can be a customer, all the retailer can be a customer of a 3PL. So, so it is a workflow of an order management system three, uh, seen uh, uh, by the view of a 3PL. Okay, not uh, seen as a retailer. And uh, so we are going to receive uh, orders 
uh, from the retail on uh, omnichannel e-commerce, uh, from uh, a lot of uh, dedicated workflow so from uh, different retailers. We're going to uh, manage uh, this flow with an order orchestration layer. We're going to synchronize the inventory everywhere. We know we're going to optimize the execution. So what is very important say, in the optimization of the execution, it is we're going to find what is, uh, is going to optimize the cost of the delay or, of the de or the delay uh, for the customer. And, uh, and we are going to give a promise of the ATP uh, at the end of to, to the customer. So clearly, you have uh, all of this in, the, in, the, in this. And to, to do that, We needed to be synchronized with a lot of transporters, so we are completely synchronized with the TMS, but only, not only to write on, uh, on the TMS, but also to understand how it is optimized uh, in the TMS. So uh, we do the optimization of the plan, you know, to say uh, it's going to be in this way, this way, this way. So th there is a, a real optimization of the cost, and we are going to do uh, an execution layer and, uh, and uh, um, to execute orders in the different warehouse and also to do some rebalancing execution uh, for uh, that uh, asks um, that ask the, the brand, but not optimizing the order management system. So th we do also the rebalancing execution during where, between warehouses also. Do, th do not, do not uh, hesitate to ask, uh, to ask, uh, to, to, uh, to ask questions if you have on this, because it's a complete schema, but uh, very, very important. Because we can manage a lot of uh, different uh, way, uh, uh, different workflows in in this uh, in this uh, in, in this one. I think when we when we get to the audience questions towards the end, this is probably the, the most relevant slide to go back to, and uh, we yes. can yeah we have lots of questions. Hopefully, we have lots of questions. Okay. Yeah. So uh, to go back to the initial pitch, when we uh, search for this uh, OMS solution, the, the key challenges were uh, here uh, described. So it was the volume of transaction. We need to have something, uh, a robust solution that will not, uh, since it's in the middle of the execution uh, path, uh, it has to, to sustain a high level of uh, transactions during peak season, etc. Um, we had very uh, specific ideas on the, the business rule that we wanted to implement, but we also knew that uh, new things would come up. So we, we knew that we wanted to have something flexible that we could, uh, uh, with parameters that we could uh, have the hands on, and maybe to even add other parameters later. And we needed flexibility also on the, the capability to integrate new brands. Uh, the, the group is quite uh, dynamic, and we have an instance uh, of, uh, of this uh, problematic just afterwards, which is LAL. So uh, Groupe Manoir purchased LAL, I think, uh, end of uh, uh, 2020. And this case is interesting because it, it was not in the original uh, project for the OMS. The, 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 the scope was, uh, was the, the, the Poupri warehouse that we described. So a new facility, uh, handle inventory on multiple uh, warehouses. But then we integrated this brand and it came with uh, multiple inventories, uh, multiple locations. And in the end, the business requirement uh, was not the same because uh, the, the problem, the, the, the key um, elements were not, the, the, the business logic behind the inventory location were not uh, the same, but the technical uh, problems was identical. And in the end, uh, the OMS was the best solution to answer to this problem, even though that was not the, the initial uh, use case for the OMS. So that's where we... We're happy to have uh, designed it this way, uh, to have this flexibility in mind. And it was uh, used actually during the, the project time phase, as we uh, will see later. What, what do you think the main challenges were for integrating Lahal into the business? Uh, well, it was the, the, the project time frame, the, the overall project of uh, integrating LAAL for us, for the group and for C-Log was uh, a huge uh, task. Uh, yeah, it, was, uh, it's, uh, it's a large, it was a large company with... Uh, It was in difficulty, so we had uh, lots of things to, to, to change. Uh, but the, 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 yeah, the time frame was uh, short, and we needed to, to be able to be operational quickly. And having those multiple warehouses <coughs> was uh, something that we didn't choose, and we had to, to cope with this. So the, the, the key challenge was to be able to deliver, and to deliver uh, B2B and B2C orders quickly. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, sorry. 
Okay. Uh, if we now go a little bit uh, deeper on the, what the OMS does, uh, maybe to, to, it goes back to what, uh, some of the things that uh, Philippe mentioned earlier, but uh, its main uh, role is to orchestrate the, the, the orders, the flows, uh, and to do this with a, a set of intelligent business rules. So uh, I'm maybe, in, maybe we can in the questions if, uh, if you want to go a little bit deeper in how the business rules are set up and how it uh, works internally. But uh, the idea is to be able to optimize for each order the, the, the decision the, and the way we will prepare it. Inventory can be on both uh, warehouses. Uh, one of the key elements, for instance, that I really like was to be able to cope with uh, peak um, or even uh, problems in a warehouse. If we have a backlog situation someplace, maybe that's the warehouse that should be preparing the B2C order. But in the end, we, have, uh, we know that we have a two-day backlog and the other place, the other DC is, uh, is available. Then we could reroute this, uh, this order to the, let's uh, tag it, B2B warehouse. Even though it's not optimal for the preparation, it will still be better for the customer because we can ship one day earlier than in the other situation. So taking into account the, the, the backlog is, uh, is a key element. And then, as Philippe said, we have the, the transportation plan and the costs of all solutions, so we can add up all the, the, the different uh, parameters and uh, pick the, the optimal solution. We can either decide to ship uh, two parcels to have uh, one uh, place that uh, regroups the, the, the whole order to make one shipment or to ship from one or the other uh, DC. And the last part is uh, the stock balancing, so uh, we have our own strategy that's not managed inside UMS for, uh, um, to, to define the quantities that we want to, to place uh, in warehouse A or B, um, but it's the OMS that handles the execution, all the, the transactions between the WMS instances uh, to make sure that we have a, a, an accurate view of the inventory at all times. No. You want to take this one? <laughs> the the uh, best one. Huh? Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe we can go after, yeah. but the, the, the goal of this slide is very clear. It was what we want to sell to, the, uh, to give to the customer, so a better promise management, so a good calculation of the ATP for everybody, a better final, final customer experience, uh, faster and cheaper, so it's, it's important. We need to synchronize everything, so from the front e-commerce and the ERP, and uh, for this, we needed a lot of information from the TMS, and we needed to execute a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of stuff to the warehouse management system. So it's a, it's a very um, uh, th this schema is a very synchronous uh, order management system because we have the stock in real time from the warehouse management system, not from the ERP because we have the real value. Uh, uh, we have a real value very uh, very soon, and uh, and uh, and of course. Uh, <laughs> For, for some of you, it can be a difficult part because you can also put uh, uh, the, the order management system synch uh, synchronization with the ERP and not the warehouse management system. So we'll, and uh, there is uh, uh, benefits and, uh, and weakness with all uh, this uh, architecture schema, so we can, uh, we can discuss it if you want. Uh, yeah, I think the, the key takeaway is to focused on the fact that this, this OMS, the way we designed and implemented it, was uh, it's a logistical tool. And uh, it goes back to my initial uh, brief, which was uh, we, as the logistics provider, uh, expand our capabilities. And this layer goes on top of our other operational tools, which uh, WMS and TMS. Uh, but it's uh, transparent for the, the clients and, uh, and the brands. And the, 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 in the end, the ERP are just the, the the, the order, uh, they just give the order, they provide the orders, and we have this additional layer to execute it uh, on the logistics side. But, but generally, for, if you ju just see an order management system for customer experience, the OMS will be between the e-commerce platform and the ERP and the WMS, but uh, the, the font for uh, digital experience, it's only the font e-commerce and the ERP, the synchronization go af goes after. In this case, you are a three PL, so you receive everything to the ERP and you synchronize, uh, synchronize the other after. Okay, it, but uh, we can we can do all this kind of schema, but this one is very uh, very good for three PL because it's very uh, real time. 
So, <laughs> so it's the best, but difficult to, uh, to, to, uh, to implement in many companies. How about store-based transactions, store-based stock man management? In store. In, in store? Yep. It's uh, it's not uh, we we don't see we don't see this uh, it, it's uh, up on the it's it's, the warehouse yeah, up now it, yeah it's in store it stays in store so basically us uh, at Sealog we have uh, replenished the stores uh, with the B two B orders but what what happens there is uh, kept in this realm I say. see okay yes is is there Sealog is a three uh, PL so at the end they don't want to manage the the, the, the store in fact this is the goal of the retailer sure and uh, but of course and uh, it is what I described uh, firstly in my uh, in my in my pitch for many customers we do the customer experience part with the click and collect shift from store and all the stuff but it's the different part of an order management system fantastic. Okay, a few words on the roadmap. Do you, yeah. Yes, the, the the project was deli delivered in uh, in six months. Uh, uh, um, it, it's a big project if you see in terms of platform. So I think it was a good setup for for such a big project. You can do uh, faster if you just do a click and collect ship from store and customer experience, and just uh, you can do a, a two or three months for for smaller project. But this one six months it's, it's good. <laughs> I think uh, the go live was in February 2021, uh, but uh, due to the COVID and the period, uh, it's, it's logic. It was logical. Uh, due to it was a uh, business, you know, uh, business. Uh, it, it was a business uh, situation was business, situa uh, business situation. And after we launched a lot of brand in B two C, B two B, regularly. And uh, and what we have to understand it is we manage. All the, you manage all the transaction of a group of uh, how many billions uh, euros? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure about the the, the, the volume, but uh, yeah, basically yes. All the all the, the one one of the, the the things that was not so um, that, that was seamless, but uh, quite a, a challenge for KBRW is the the, the amount of. Uh, B2B orders because uh, in the end we we set up this system to be able to to use up our, our new warehouse that was dedicated to B2C but uh, we still had to make all the orders and all the the stores replenishments go through this uh, tool because now we had some inventory somewhere else and uh, if the the remaining uh, items were there we needed to to ship them to the store from from this uh, warehouse so even though it's uh, in the context of uh, e-commerce, uh, it also needs to be needs to handle the, the yeah. whole uh, the whole volumes of uh, of the business yeah, of the business, um, and it's yeah. uh, one of the biggest group in uh, in terms of, uh, of of business in uh, in the retail in the retail fashion in France. Um, Can go yeah. So the, the, yeah, okay. So why did we choose KBRW? Well, uh, as I said, we had a, a quite precise um, uh, intentions and, uh, and ideas about the, the business rules that we wanted to implement, and we couldn't find on, on the market uh, of the shelves a solution that would uh, fit those uh, requirements. And uh, we didn't want to, to, uh, to go back on those, uh, on those requirements. In this field, uh, KBRW was, uh, had strong uh, um, references and we, we were confident in the, their uh, business and IT know-how. Uh, we knew also that this uh, technical part, this technical aspect of the solution, uh, which was critical because it's in the way of the all orders, uh, we, we had to have something robust and, uh, and which could handle, uh, which was uh, scalable. Uh, and what, that was one advantage also as of the KBRW, and then the the, the, the relationship is uh, is quite uh, easy, and uh, we we yeah we we had strong strong ideas at the beginning, but uh, when we see this project time frame, yeah, we are talking about uh, agile development, which was not in our culture, so we we arrived with. Uh, partially designed solution and then we continually uh, refined it with them and uh, yeah, it was a kind of a co-creation pro process uh, it was a uh, which was fruit fruitful yeah fantastic 
Okay. Question? I think, I think what we'll do is I'll, I'll ask a couple of questions and then uh, we'll probably have 10, 15 minutes for, uh, for questions from the audience. Um, we need to have headphones on for that as well. Um, I'm interested to know regarding the, uh, particularly the evolution of the project. You know, you have a business running other clients. Obviously, your business is evolving. What are the, what are the biggest changes that you've seen in terms of uh, demand side requirements for these types of solutions? Or maybe, maybe start with, uh, with the 4PL requirements. Uh, How has the business's needs evolved over the last three to four years? Uh, the business is uh, the, the needs are on the, the, the ability to pass the, the, the peak seasons uh, flawlessly, uh, basically. In our uh, field, in our markets, uh, the, the express shipping and fast deliveries is not so much the, 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 the demand. We, we always want to improve and to shorten the delivery. Uh, um, the there will be times, but it's not so much as the the, the, the the overall times as to be able not to have longer uh, there will be times during during peak seasons and uh, so we in in a current uh, in a in a common week we had no problem and delivering in two uh, three or four days depending on the, the carrier option. Uh, the hard part was more to handle peak season and uh, yeah Black Friday etc. And yeah, now that can go smoothly, and we, we don't see uh, extended delays during those uh, those periods. And I will I will say I will add to add a new uh, new uh, new brand because uh, you buy a yes yeah. when they buy a brand they don't buy a small brand they buy a big brand so <laughs> uh, so you you need to manage a new business and uh, and uh, with a lot of transaction. And, and even though they're a, a wonderful client, um, I'm sure, uh, over the past few years for you, I'm assuming you've got other clients elsewhere as well. The business is probably growing. Yeah. Probably had a, a lot of uh, interesting demand over the last three, four years. Yes. What are the other areas of, uh, of evolution that you've seen on your tech roadmap on customer requirements? Um, okay. What, what, uh, I, I see a lot of stuff. Uh, first of all, uh, I see a growing demand in the, in the green uh, area. Okay. So, uh, C, C, uh, CO2 uh, calculation, it's a very big point. Uh, and uh, I'm going to see the circular economy also. So, and we have a big project with uh, Stellantis and this. So, uh, it was, uh, it was very uh, something important because we see that more and more projects are about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, we see, we see a real, um, a, a real importance, um, in the IT integration also. The fact that uh, people, first of all, they wanted just to integrate one or two tools in their company. And when they see the power, uh, the power of the order management system, they understand that you can connect a lot of stuff in your brand, uh, in, your, in your company, and it can allow you to create new customer journey that, that you can, couldn't imagine in the past. So uh, for instance, uh, you, can, uh, you, can, uh, you can imagine Really, uh, very, uh, really, um, really workflows that you couldn't create in the past. I'm gonna give you an example. In the uh, in the telecommunication, you can exchange a telephone uh, or stuff like this. You can uh, create a complex loss workflow in order to uh, to give uh, access to uh, to a phone before and not uh, and uh, and after to uh, to give a new one. So you can imagine a co complex workflow. So I see complex workflow in a way, green uh, green in another way, and uh, the capability to uh, integrate IT environment also. And see if I see uh, stuff about the customer journey, it is always the same thing. You can uh, think about to uh, to have something quicker, so uh, express delivery, and uh, and with the right promise. I think the right promise is even more important than the the, the rest. And uh, and even if it is something that everybody uh, say it's uh, it's already done, the right pro to execute the right promise the uh, after it's always a, it's always a concern for everybody. Deliver on time. Deliver on time. What you have said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's uh, uh, yes. Uh, that should say this, uh, you you do what you said. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, to, to had a few words on, on those topics. So the the, the promise uh, we didn't uh, dwell on it too much, but uh, because we we still did not implement it on the on the front end of our uh, of our websites, the the promise that uh, we can make. But it's actually yeah one of the key features of this uh, of this solution is that. 
when we have an order, we orchestrate it and we can simulate and we can calculate. Uh, that's part of the, of the orchestration to, to calculate when it will be delivered. And this information, uh, we can uh, send it back to the, to the front. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a key feature that we didn't completely implement yet. And on the, the green question, uh, the, the, the carbon footprint of the delivery, etc. It's also something that we would like to to build upon. Uh, I think the, the the key challenge will be to have the raw data. So to maybe go a little bit deeper into the the business logic that we've implemented. Basically, we are using three criteria, which are uh, the costs uh, of the, the the different orchestration solution. So one order uh, comes into the system, we will see the different ways we can uh, execute it. Uh, two parcels, one with a uh, regroupment, etc., from this place or from that place. We will sum up all the, the, the costs uh, of all the elements, the, the B2B preparation, the, the, the reception at the other warehouse, the B2C preparation, the, the carrier between the two warehouses and the, the, all the, the transportation. So the cost is one criteria, then the time, and we will compare uh, how uh, we plan to deliver it at which date uh, with the promise that we made. And if we miss, the, if we intend, to, if we plan that this uh, plan will miss the promise, we will penalize the plan. And then, the, of course, the, the the completeness. And we will, uh, for B two C, it's not really relevant. It's completely, it's a, it's a yes or no criteria because we will not make the decision to to use a plan that will not fulfill completely the order. But in some scenarios, in some uh, use cases, we can say that okay, for uh, uh, store replenishment, maybe we can. Uh, delay this, uh, this one item uh, for one or two days uh, if uh, that saves us uh, an important amount of money, for instance. Uh, so those are the three criteria uh, that we can weigh uh, depending on the, the brand uh, requirements. And uh, we have in mind that we could add uh, a fourth criteria uh, regarding the, the carbon footprint. And again, the brand can, uh, we can decide with the brand how we tweak those parameters to, to make it this one way more or less. And, uh, Fantastic. What, what are the things that sticks out on your website, curiously, straight away, is, uh, is the use of automation. Yeah. So you've obviously taken a lot of investment of CapEx and, and robotics and automation of the, uh, of the fulfillment centers. Um, in terms of the, the software layer that KBRW provides, has it allowed you to more rapidly integrate some of those automated fulfillment solutions in any way? Uh, no, there is no direct link between the, the, the solution and the automation or the robotics. Uh, it, yeah, the KBRW solution uh, allows us to open a new warehouse and plug it to the, the, the system uh, or get a new brand and plug it to the, to the system as well. The, the robotics is, more, is, is deeper in the, the, the processes layers. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, we're going to have to put our headphones on now because I'm going to suggest that uh, the audience should ask some questions. But we'll put up the, um, the architecture slide so we can have uh, some more, more detailed questions, hopefully. So I'll, uh, I'll open it to the floor. Um, we don't bite. We're very friendly, nice people. So feel free to ask uh, any questions you may have. But you have to speak into the... Uh, Baz, Baz, the boss in the back, says we have to speak into the microphone. Otherwise, uh, we won't be able to hear you. So please go ahead. Any, any questions from the audience? Any retailers? Other three PLs? Any observations? This is a shy bunch. No? Okay, I'll go for another one. Um, in terms of uh, third-party integrations on, uh, on your solution, the audience is being shy, so I'm going to throw in another question. Um, and I am calling you out. I dare you to ask a question. Okay, um, what are your most uh, challenging integrations, third-party integrations? You know, you mentioned TMSs, etc. You're sitting in the middle, normalizing a lot of information. Um, there's a lot of uh, a, a lot of people on uh, on keyboards doing very hard work. What is your most challenging third-party integration? For this project or for generally? In, in general, in terms of the product roadmap. Uh, for this project, I, I'm going to say the TMS really because we have a lot of rules that we need to take from the, uh, the TMS. So there, there are a lot of uh, of rules uh, only dedicated to the to the transport uh, because uh, it is a sweep hill. Okay, uh, for other uh, for uh, other retailer, definitely the, the 
between the warehouse management system and the e-commerce uh, the, the e-commerce front front uh, uh, the e-commerce uh, platform it really depends on what rules they have already on their on their website because when you are an order management system you need to be flexible because you're going to bridge a gap between two worlds you know uh, two, uh, two 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 worlds yes the downstream uh, worlds with the 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 downstream the downstream supply chain world and the upstream supply chain world so uh, how to, uh, to 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 fulfill the, the the orders and so the difficulty is sometimes you need to to fulfill uh, to 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 bridge a small gap and sometimes a very big gap <laughs> and the difficulty when you do you are an order management system it's someone you have to do everything I'm gonna take a. We have a customer like Jardiland, in which we uh, they don't have the inventory on their website. So mm -hmm. every time you see an, an, an ATP, even in a in a picture of a product, it is they are gonna call uh, our API. And sometimes uh, you're gonna have uh, people they are gonna just use our order management system in the basket. So it it can be very difficult. Sometimes they they're gonna use real time and sometimes not. So the if it is completely real time, everything, of course, uh, the e-commerce uh, website is complex because you are the, without you, the e-commerce doesn't work at all. <laughs> so, and they don't do, do business. In the other way, I'm going to say uh, the ERP and for, and uh, of course, for industrials, uh, the biggest uh, customers that we have, like Michelin and stuff like this, definitely the ERP because uh, you have uh, rules that you cannot imagine in, your, in the ERP of an industrial because you have the calculation of the ATP of the production, you have everything like that, a lot of rules, uh, and, uh, and uh, you have a lot of stuff in back office for this. Fantastic. Pause there, offer, uh, offer any questions to the audience? Do not, do not hesitate. We don't bite, we promise. I'm going to resort to bribery in a second, if you don't ask any questions. I dare you. Excellent. Thank you. Brave soul. Thank you, sir. Hi, do you listen to me? Well, I'm Ignacio Huerga Nespresso. Sorry. No, but I'm going to No worries. Um, I have two questions regarding the allocation rules for the transport companies. Uh, does the business have the autonomy to modify those rules? Uh, and then the other question is about returns. We have not discussed maybe in this project, but yeah, what's, the, what's your solution offering for return management? Okay, I'm going to start. You want to answer the first one or? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Sure. Okay. Uh, Clearly, in in this uh, in this project, yes, you can you can manage they can manage by themselves all the rules that, that we mentioned about the fact to create a plan and stuff like this. So it's completely uh, in their hands, and we have created uh, this uh, co, uh, co co building uh, solution in order to solve this problem clearly. Uh, so uh, yes, they manage it uh, themselves. The second question is was about the return. Uh, clearly, it's a very important point. So. I'm going to take downstream and upstream uh, supply chain. I'm going to separate it. So you have the return for the customer. Clearly, the uh, the return um, the return for uh, for um, uh, for parcel. Okay, uh, for direct to consumer. Yes, it's managed in another management system, and we can manage all of this uh, in in the solution. And we manage it for many retailers, like Etam means the retail fashion uh, or. Uh, or uh, Louis Vuitton, uh, we have this, okay? And uh, another point, it is uh, we can also manage it for the supply chain in, in the upstream. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and it's also another point, it is like uh, the circular economy, uh, for instance, if you want to, uh, to structure, uh, to reverse a car or spare part and uh, to organize it, we can, we can also manage this with an, uh, with an order management system. So it's two kind of return. It's not at all the same, uh, uh, the same stuff. So w one is order management system clearly in the downstream supply chain, and the other it's in the upstream supply chain. Clear or and uh, yes, we can manage both of them, but it's different. It's different system, in different system. Thank you. Um, any other brave souls? You can also introduce yourselves. No. Um, Baz, the boss in the back, says we have five minutes left. So I'll throw in um, one more question. Um, you know, you're an enterprise software solution, fundamentally. Yes. Um, 
you, you deal with some very complex customers, wonderful customers, but very complicated customers, very complicated verticals. You're doing uh, a lot of uh, a, a lot of different types of transactions. When you when you go into typical enterprise um, uh, appraisal or, or sales process, pre-sales process, what what uh, estimated not not budget, but a, a portion of budget would you say is licensing versus implementation? So you say have a unit of a hundred. Um, yeah. In an average client, like what would you say is, is ready it, to go versus yes, no, the amount it, of implementation that's actually required? It's completely different from a customer to another. Sometimes we can be, uh, we, uh, for a small brand or a mid-market brand, we are going to try, of course, to be very the most we can plug and play. Sure. And uh, for uh, big brands, like uh, I mentioned before, they don't want plug and play at all. <laughs> and uh, I can say that the build is bigger than the... Uh, at the end of the company, it's like 50-50, mm -hmm. okay, for, uh, for, uh, from uh, our results, financial results. So uh, to answer clearly, it's 50-50. But uh, it depends on the, the size of the brand. So the 50-50, but uh, with a big uh, 50, uh, more than 50 for the biggest brand. And uh, and, uh, and clearly, when you are Michelin or uh, Vuitton, you don't want the same uh, solution as uh, the other. But clearly, when you are a mid-market brand, you need to have a lot of plug-and-play parts uh, in your solution. So the, the, the goal of our company is to create the good mix and uh, in sectors that we know very well. So, for instance, I'm going to take uh, the mass merchant market with the, retail, the specialized retail. Uh, in which uh, KBRW is pretty good with a brand like Butte or Jardiland or, uh, or stuff like this. We are going to uh, build solution uh, more plug and play we, we try than uh, with uh, Vuitton or Michelin. Okay? And, uh, and after you have the fashion retail and the fashion retail is another industry you cannot find solution completely plug and play. So the reason why you are going to choose KBRW in this context is really to bet, beat your competition. So uh, you have to be... Uh, a biggest brand. So it depends really on the sector and, uh, and we vert verticalize solution uh, for sectors and, 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 uh, and for the other, uh, we, do, uh, we do a lot of customization. Fantastic. We have time for one last punchy question. Any brave souls? I dare you, and I promise you're going to feel better later for, for speaking up. No? Okay. Um, I, think, uh, I think we'll probably wrap it up there because uh, we're about to get kicked off anyway. So thank you very much for your time. That was wonderful. I appreciate it. Um, feel free to reach out to these gentlemen after the, after the session. And uh, thank you very much for joining. appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you.